How do you feel, Dee Dee, being a family man that's been a digital nomad, been raising your kids as you travel? You know, what need have you felt um, needing the most? You know, I, I, I grew up in a very, uh, how do you say this, warm family where my father worked, my, my mother was always there for us because that was still possible in these times. And then because of, you know, the inflationary aspect of fiat currency, there we grew in the system where now parents both need to work to provide for their children. Um, so I still know how it felt to be around my family, my parents. They didn't drop me anywhere. They, they took care of me, you know. When I came home from school, my mother was there. There was food and tape and everything. And I always loved that part of life. So when I figured out that I was becoming this workaholic and was just, you know, accumulating wealth, and my wife even was working, and we didn't spend that much time with the kids like we should, that was for us this, you know, this, this switch we needed to turn back into becoming a normal family, taking care of your of your kids and now I've been traveling four years with my family um, you know <laughs> I'm with them like 24 7 and I would never turn this back because this is exactly why I took my kids I made kids, kids not just because I love sex but also because I want to um, you know educate my children and teach them and show them the world and show them an elephant and show them the sea and snorkel and all these things I didn't take these kids to drop them off at childcare at nine weeks old or something. You know, this is not my goal of, of, of this is not my vision of raising children in this beautiful world. So for me, this life change we made as a family is, is, is just amazing. And I need to be honest, it's not an easy change. We, we really were a very materialistic family spoiling our kids till they were like 10 years old. So even the oldest one needed to change back from a kid that had their own quad, their own bikes, their own everything, you know, to a kid that now was giving this away, selling this, to give this to poor children and to now hang around your parents 24-7. It's not always easy, um, but I would never change back to the life we, would live, we were living because that was not life, that was just jail, that was jail time. If, if I compare it to that, it was jail time for me. Do you think that your, do you think that your kids would go back to the old way? We talk a lot with him about this because we always worry, are we doing the right thing? You keep worrying, and if, even four years after, you still like, you still grab, you know, you're, you're that, you know, pulled in the system that you grew up through, that you are, it's still difficult to get lo loose from the system. So you always worry, okay, am I doing the right thing for my kids? And the kids are always like, I don't know, we love this life. Yes, we love to go to back to Holland to see family and friends one, two months a year. But no, this is okay. We don't want to go to school because we were forced to learn things we didn't care about. Now we can learn things we really care about. And you are there to support us. And this is what they love. And, and you know, the only thing they miss in this life, and, and that's what, what brings me back again to How to Dao, is the social context, the offline social context. Of course, they have their virtual online you know worlds where they spend hours a week with their friends from Holland and England and them at the States you know and they all meet each other there as avatars and they chat and they do all that stuff you know but they still need to have this social environment where they can connect with same aged kids which my oldest daughter is 14 I cannot say her first kiss she already had a kiss but she can kiss a guy you know, and she can go on a date with a guy. And my uh, second daughter as well, you know, they need these social things, these, these also social, that's called experiments. Because you, got, you, you cannot grow up in a very safe environment of only your father and mother, because then you're not growing up in real life, because you need to uh, face some trouble as well. Mm. So that is why I believe this community could provide this environment where they can also have these experiences I had as a, as a kid. Um, so if th that is my answer, you know, it's 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 not always easy, but they they slowly grow into this digital nomad life, and, and you can see their mind being way more adult than kids of their age. So they they like here, if you prepare this uh, this family dinner, my oldest daughter is like, okay, I'm coming, I'm going to help, a, I'm just helping with yeah. groceries. Normal kids of 14, they don't do this at this point in life. You know, they are just there on their hand, they Snapchatting and making fake Instagram accounts to troll other kids and you know all these kid things. And so I, I can really, yeah, I can really f feel that my kids are slowly growing into it, but also miss a little bit uh, of the physical, social environment. You know, to go out, especially now.
Yeah. Let me hold the daughter's 14. She's driving the, the bike here around the whole island. You know, this is beautiful. And how long? You need to be 16. And even then, you need to get a driving license. Now she's 14. She's just driving the bike. She do got those groceries. She does everything she wants. So she has this this freedom feeling like, oh, I'm not a baby anymore. Yeah. You know, all other Western societies, they pamper, do you say it like this? Pamper yeah. their people. You know, they, they treat them like little babies. Yeah. Oh, there is a flu. Stay inside. You know, all these things, they push on you, this pressure, and also the pressure on the parents to treat your kids in that way, even if you don't want to. That is completely different when you're a digital normal family. No pressure, no rules, no nothing. You just do it the way you like it. Yeah. It's interesting because I know statistically it's said that we become the average of the five people we spend the most time with. And that's really scary, I think, in light of what we're seeing right now. You talk about, you touch on COVID. Um, and you see people not knowing to stand up for themselves, not knowing that they can maybe question these orders, not knowing that maybe they can use their own judgment. And the reason this is, is because they spent, you know, like you're saying, to J uh, John Lennon's point, you know, it takes four years, give me four years with a child, and I'll embed a seed that, you know, we'll, they'll never be able to break out of. Now imagine what 12 years of traditional schooling does to someone, you know? And it's because they prepare, they prepare the mass public for them going into these factory-like behavior type jobs, you know, where you do what you're told and you don't question. And it's really scary, you know? And I would say that here at House Dow, that's, we're using the same science of programming, but in the opposite way programming to create individuals that are independent, that have ideas for projects, and are in an environment where this can become actualized, realized. So that, 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 that was a real shocker for me, man. So if, if you turn into the five people that you're surrounded with, I'm slowly turning into a woman because I have like four, three daughters and a wife. Wait, I need to check. <laughs> That's still there, it's still there. Still, I'm not a lady boy yet. <laughs> Oh, or a boy lady. <laughs> boy lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, uh, but yeah, that's, that's completely true what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's important to spend time with people that you um, feel that they are in line with your vision of life. Yeah. And one could argue that it's the monetary system, the inflated monetary system, that then makes it extremely difficult for families to be there for their families that they created because they have to work harder because money is worth less, you know? So much how, much how you see in nature, and this is just a general rule across all, all nature, is that things unfold from the inside out. You know, a seed becomes a tree. Um, you know, ideas become reality. You know, a child is grown from the inside out, you know? So I think in the same way that the economic situation in the world as a whole and our society's fragmenta fragmentation is a result of our monetary system that's inflated, that's broken, you know, it's corrupt. In the same way, or in the opposite way rather, you know, what we're building here at House of Dow is based on Bitcoin. That's our seed, that's our foundation. Yeah. You know, that's deflationary by nature. It's only gonna go up in value. It's decentralized, you know, it's censorship resistant. It's, it's the exact same, but in the opposite direction. So I think that's so powerful and it says so much for what we're building. Yeah, somewhere along the line, we just lost sight of the fact that, you know, if, if you just look at life, if you look at a baby, a baby, you know, is born and then it, it teaches itself everything. Mm -hmm. It teaches itself how to crawl, it teaches itself how to walk. Yes, we can guide them a little bit and help them a, bit, a little bit, but they develop themselves. So where, somewhere in the point, we just invented the system where we need to take over what this beautiful wonder needs to know at a certain age, needs to read at a certain age, needs to calculate at a certain age, needs to have a certain level of knowledge. Why? Just to become part of a system that is, you know, needs to run, to become oil for this huge business called the Dutch government or the Dutch NV or BV, whatever you call it. So I think it's like, I can see it. The youngest one has never gone to school. She's, she's a bright girl, she had taught herself to read, to write. She's not as fast as other kids of her age, but she knows other things very fast. She is very fast if, you, if she, she reads people, because she has traveled. She has been around with different kinds of people. So I think at the end, 
what does it matter if a kid can read when she is 20 um, or 5? Because when she will start to work, really work, if she will be 20, normal people will like graduate from school around that age. And if they have the same level of knowledge at that age, that is the goal. The path to the goal doesn't matter if where she leads, uh, where she starts to learn something. It's just that the goal is that she needs to learn how to read or whatever, even if that is still a goal, you know? Because if you look into the future, into 10 years' time, not now even closer, into five years' time, I've been telling this for so long that I still have this 10 years' time. In five years' time, I don't need to educate myself in languages anymore. I have this e earpiece that is wireless, and I just speak Dutch and this Japanese guy has the same earpiece and he understands Japanese and he speaks Japanese and Google Translate will translate it in my ear into Dutch and we can have this conversation without even ever learning to speak a language. My daughter is not learning to calculate it anymore because she's like, she learns the basics but still she's not like, yeah, if it's too difficult, and she's like, uh, Siri, 1,250,000 uh, times 7 divided by 4, 2 seconds. Right. And you have the end of it. We, we are living in an age of, you know, of, of um, how do you say it again? Um, we are living in this age of information. Information, you can grab information in a second from all of the internet. Why would you need to repeat all these things by learning it like at the top of your head if it's already there? Yeah. That's such an interesting point because it's also said that, there's a saying, I don't know who said it, but says like the, the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your questions. And if you think about creators, much like yourself, you know, you've created Master Ventures, created several other companies, different projects now, um, and anyone in the space that's an innovator, what makes them different is their ability to ask good questions and then follow that question with another question until they get the answers. You know, what does it matter, like to your point, if you have all this information, you've memorized all this information, but what are you gonna do with it? Right, so for your daughter, it's only gonna matter what she learns in as much as it's in line with what she wants to do with her life. That's all that's really gonna matter. It's not gonna matter if she learns all the science, all this math, and like for what? She ends up becoming an artist, you know? Like everything that we learn is only as important as it's relevant to what we're doing. So I think, you know, and then it, it also makes me think about, I was reading somewhere about how like the, the schools of the elite, um, they have a totally different paradigm. They don't, they prize leadership. They prize and they reward kids for asking, you know, challenging questions. You know, for, um, they, they have a totally different paradigm, you know, problem solving, creating. And so I think it'd be interesting to incorporate a lot of that into the, the schools that we build, because that's also part of House of Dao, you know, like to your point, we're trying to raise communities. So part of that is gonna be the school system, like that we design. Yeah, and have and have people have people have an opinion, right? You know, because that's what the traditional school system is doing. It's creating opinion, and like I always use this example. In Holland, there is this test that all the kids need to do at the end of the year, and then one question in this test was, um, if you see an igloo like built from ice, what color fits to the igloo? Is it blue, or is it red? So there were kids that answered red. And then this answer was not correct, like, Quite because it's not red, it's blue, the blue is cold. But then this kid responded, why cold? It's red, because people who sit in the igloo to have it warm. The igloo provides warmth for the people, so why is my answer wrong? So this free thinking, this is what we need to provide children with. Why is something blue? Why can't it be red? Because it's providing heat for the people that want to live in it. So this is the, 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 the whole, if, if this is one example of the whole education system that is completely wrong. It's just forcing people to believe something. It's the same that I would force my youngest daughter from, from the day she was born, that if I show her a banana, I would tell her, this is an apple. And I will keep telling her from the day she's born, this is an apple, this is an apple, this is an apple, this is an apple. The whole world can tell her, no, that's a banana. She says, she will always believe what their parents says, taught them. She will always say, nah, man, this is an apple. My daddy said that. That's true, it's an apple. Mm -hmm. And this is what you need to do, like, as, as, as parents ago, take control of the knowledge of your kids, because that is the knowledge you want to provide them of, because you believe in something. Too long. Too much. Next part.
So in the news a few days ago, J.K. Rowling asked in, on, in Twitter, she asked the crypto community, community in general, I think, uh, you know, what is Bitcoin? And everyone jumped in, trying to help her understand. They were using her novel and the characters and you know everything to try to explain this to her, and they failed miserably. Uh, Elon Musk jumped in and he said it's magic internet money. She responded with, "Bitcoin is you know all I understand is like Bitcoin is blah 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 blah." That's you what know. she said. Yeah, she wrote blah 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 mm, blah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's so sad and really speaks to the social responsibility I think everyone in the crypto space has to the rest of the world. Because everyone who's in crypto right now were comparable to the founding fathers of like every other major movement or nation. You know, we are laying the groundwork. And I believe that we could have done better. You know, how? I don't know. And that's my question to you, is how would you have answered, how would you have addressed her question? What is Bitcoin? Like, where do you start? I answered the tweet with uh, with a TikTok video my daughter made. She she made this TikTok video of her being three people, one sitting in a chair, looking at an angel and looking at a jet devil, and they were both explaining what Bitcoin is in a very simple way. So this is how I answered to JK here. My daughter uh, will uh, ex try to explain it to you in a very simple way. I've got so many voices in my head. Is this a Bitcoin? No, Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer digital cash that will include the excluded into the new monetary system. It's a revolution. Huh? Which means the digital money that people can send to each other without a bank account. It's going to change the world. Whoa, that's cool. Bitcoin is decentralized, which means nobody controls it. Okay. It's 24-7 usable and borderless, which means you can use it 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, all over the world. That's really awesome. It's also unconfiscatable, which means nobody can take it from you. Yeah, that's important. And it's immutable, which means nobody can change or hack it. Whoa, that's really cool. Thanks, voices in my head. Straight to the moon, Bitcoin, all the way up! All the way up. Um, How long was that video? That video is about uh, two minutes. Yeah, two minutes. minutes. It. It's a really nice video. It's, uh, she, she did her best in creating it, and uh, that's also, uh, you know, she's she's twelve and she created this beautiful thing, and uh, she she loves to make these uh, TikToks, which is a very creative way of uh, using the telephone instead of just watching Netflix. Um, and at the same time, I answered a, a tweet to her as well that the, the, the more there's another author, a huge author, a bestseller author, Robert Kiyosaki, I think is his name, and he wrote Poor Bad Rich Dad, and he's a huge Bitcoin believer. So I said, man, I check, uh, just text your friend and uh, ask him. And um, yeah, and now also to, to my mind comes this guy we met together, Emerson Sparts. Yeah. I think he's the founder of this huge Bitcoin, uh, or this huge, not Bitcoin, this huge Harry Potter fan site. And I think he even visited JK at her home to um, to, to write one chapter of the book. Mm -hmm. So JK, just uh, call Emerson and you yeah. still have his number and uh, ask him because he's also a true believer of Bitcoin and investor in Bitcoin. So, yeah, <clears throat> yeah no, Emerson, Emerson stayed with us at House of Dow and um, yeah, so Emerson Sparts, I mean, he's, he's really, uh, he's not human. Uh, he's he's uh, a supercomputer um, in a human's body. Um, but incredibly charming. And, uh, like, he's one of, I'm one of his biggest fans, I guess. Um, and uh, and so Emerson, when he was 12 years old, read two Harry Potter books in one night. I don't know how it's possible. I think it would take me at least a year to read one, probably. <laughs> And wow. um, and so when he was twelve years old, uh, he there was a competition uh, who had the world's best Harry Potter site, and um, and Emerson created a really shitty site, and uh, but figured out you know how to hack the system essentially by uh, logging out, and logging in, and you can vote for yourself every time you log out and log in, log out, log in, <laughs> log out, log in. So he did it like for two days or something, just nonstop all day long, and then he was at number one, and um, and then he got to number one, and he realized. Well, I definitely don't have the world's best Harry Potter site. It's just a piece of shit. So he really just focused on how do I make the world's best website now? And so he learned how to do that real quickly. And then within a short amount of time, actually built an incredible Harry Potter site. And then very shortly after that, sold it for uh, 12 years old. I think it was something like $100 million or something. It wasn't even selling the whole site. It was just a 
a, a, an ownership in it. I don't know if it was majority or minority, but it was it was a, a really significant. I mean, and what a cool ha- and that this is just and, and Emerson was a middle school dropout, by the way, and you know has gone on to um, you know being he's like a Forbes thirty under thirty. He is the you know the the Forbes calls him the king of virality. He's gone on to build something like thirty other um, thirty other viral websites that all have millions of unique visitors every month. And uh, this is just a testament yeah. to the fact that you really don't need school. And he was one of the people who really, you know, I mean, I already knew this, but you know, it, just his story is so um, so inspiring. You know, he just learned the things that he wanted to learn. And uh, I mean, granted, the kid has a, a brain unlike anyone else I've ever met. But it but it goes. But there's t- plenty of stories of people out there who, you know, who felt that school was slowing them down and created their own way to success. You know, and. Um, yeah, so Emerson was incredibly inspiring. Yeah, that's yeah I, I need to admit that the beautiful part of the Emerson story was that it was in the House of Dow, like in 2018, I think it mm-hmm. was. And then his whole family was there, so his yeah. brothers, but also his parents, um, and Tom and Maggie Sparks, I think yeah. it was, and his aunt Betsy. Yeah. And this was like, I get goosebumps. The goosebumps, why? Because I got time to spend time with Tom and Maggie, two parents that already wow. raised older kids in a free way without educational, uh, without school education. So I had a lot of questions, of course, and it was an amazing time. Tom, I'm, I'm still, I have, I'm still, no, I have your invitation to come and visit you, guys. I will, when I set foot in states, I will visit you in your beautiful house, of course. Yeah, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're amazing parents. Yeah, the, the whole family is incredible. Yeah, and there's these two brothers, and they, you know, traveling the world, and uh, and you know, I know that when when they're ready to disrupt something it's going to be flawless yeah, again, the full power yeah. yeah full power emerson drew dylan dylan yeah dylan yeah cool guys so you guys bring up a really interesting point that you, makes me you know you know what sorry you know what i used to do oh. <laughs> like you know how people have those bracelets like wwjd what would jesus do yeah i, I used to think I used to think of myself, what would Emerson do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, what in a situation, like, hmm, what would Emerson do? Okay. Yeah, yep. I, we saw so many conversations on the table. I was like, there was another dude that was also like very. Travis? No, the no. other guy was like a, like a small robot. And if they started to communicate, Dennis. Again, Dennis. Like, like, like it was like two, two dictionaries talking to each other at high level. I mean, yeah. I was just laughing and eating. Like, Okay. <laughs> With like Good two robots, two artificial intelligent robots. <laughs> yeah. Do and you it, think the chance is? No, the chance is. Do you think if I calculate? No, you cannot calculate. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Emerson's thing is reading reading one book a day, yeah. um, and he does it every single day, and still has time to do uh, incredible amounts of other things, which yeah. is mind blowing. Um, but if you want to know a little bit about uh, what Emerson's mind is like. Um, something I always recommend to people. It's incredibly inspiring, incredibly, f- inf- it's one of the most moving documentaries for me ever. Um, is, is called The Internet's Own Boy, the story of Aaron Swartz. Um, when I met Emerson, within one minute of meeting him, the first person I thought about was Aaron Swartz because they are, have incredible incredibly similar stories and they had incredibly similar brains. Um, and then when I met Emerson, I said, I said, man, like within five minutes of meeting him, I pulled him aside and said, man, do you know who like, Aaron Swartz was? And he goes, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like, man, you ever seen that story, The Internet's Own Boy? He goes, mm-hmm, he just kind of smiles at me. <laughs> and then I go, dude, you remind me so much of Aaron. He, he goes, I know, right? Like, I always thought of myself as like the slightly less weird and like socially <laughs> awkward Aaron, you know? And, um, but why I'm such a big fan of, er- of, of Emerson, if you watch that documentary, The Internet's Own Boy, you'll see what an amazingly talented, incredibly gifted person Aaron Swartz was, and how he had the power to move the internet and move masses. Um, he was just knew how to do that. Um, and, you know, we lost him due to the U.S. political and justice system that was incredibly unjust. And, you know, and there was an incredibly sad story, but incredibly inspiring. And it was actually one of the most um, moving stories for me to do what I, what I want to do, you know, leave America, get out of that ridiculous system, and, you know, ultimately 
conquer it in a, in a in the way that we're doing it you know so this is something i recommend to everybody to watch um yeah we'll put the link in the description below so you you both make me think about uh something i heard mike novogratz once say which is that mass adoption will happen once once we master storytelling for bitcoin for its use case in the real world and it's interesting because now that jk rowling jumped in you know, with her question, and she stirred the water, basically, even though it was not done right or in the most, you know, best way. Um, nevertheless, she stirred the water. And how you said, Didi, you know, you in your response to her, you know, you asked her to go reach out to her author friend, um, Robert Kiyosaki, because we all like, because we're the average of the five people we spend the most time with, we listen to people like us, right? There's so many studies on this. So... And because mass adoption, yes, it needs to happen on the top tier levels, you know, with our older generations, um, in, in use, in ease of use, the way you're talking about, you know, it's like things, people who don't care about the fundamentals of Bitcoin yeah. have to be able to grab the apps or the dApps, have to be able to use cryptocurrencies and not care about how this vehicle is driven, right? They just need to be able to use it easily. So I would say that approach is for the, the primarily more the older generations because they're kind of not too tech savvy. But for the younger generations, which is like the biggest opportunity to create, to program, for the lack of a better word, maybe, maybe that is the right word, to program them and believing in the power of Bitcoin and how it can be used and, and maybe make an example of someone like the internet's own boy or like someone like Emerson Sparks, you know, that didn't grow up and wasn't educated in a traditional school system, you know, but is this shining example of what a human being can become like if they have parents that support the unschooling, that support follow your passion, you know. Um, I think it could be quite amazing if a novel like Harry Potter, something that's super engaging and there's characters and it's interesting, you know, to Mike Novogratz's point, it's you have to story tell it in a way that engages everyone and tells the big picture but also within it, there's use case scenarios, there's the bad guys, you know, the governments, you know, and then there's the, the opposition that rises up and this is their solution, but it's peaceful like Gandhi, you know, be the solution, don't fight, but use peaceful methods, which is provide an alternative. So I think it could be so interesting if someone, JK Rowling, were to write a novel that explained Bitcoin in a way that would just in one sweep educate everyone, you know? All I can think about when you say Mike Novogratz is, have you seen this video meme thing where it like goes, Mr. Novogratz, and like, it's like, like something oh, yeah. optimistic and it's like, it's his head spinning around or something. It's so funny. Maybe we throw him in there, right? <laughs> Bitcoin, please go to moon. Stop going sideways now. I say we going down to 1k, but Mr. Novograd say we have a bottom it out, bottom it out, Novograd is bullish, bottom it out, don't ever rise is bearish, Novograd is bullish, we're going to be 40,000, let us go. No, it would, be, it would be amazing if we get another had a Harry Potter book where Harry Potter is ordering his uh, magical wand now with the uh, bitcoins. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, there is a Bitcoin book. I think the book is called Bitcoin Money, and it's already translated in more than twenty languages. And it's uh, to educate children about Bitcoin. Nice. It's a beautiful book. It's also translated in Dutch and, and, and uh, German. Probably and, children and grandparents, I would say. Yeah, probably children and grandparents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, probably yes. Uh, uh, but it's a, it's a nice book. I, I can. Yeah, maybe we can add the link to it. And it'd be nice if they bought some yeah. pizza with it. You know, I mean, <laughs> hey, it's two days away from Bitcoin Pizza Day. Yeah, is it two days? Is yeah, it? Oh yeah. My God, we're gonna have we're gonna have uh, House of Dow family pizza night. Pizza night. Pizza night. Yeah, we need to cover it with bitcoins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. It's okay. Well, Carl and Chris will pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We volunteer them. <laughs> we will get some pizzas with M and M's, and we will take the pizza to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> on that note, it's getting a bit late. Yeah. It's coming up for our own very dinner time. Uh, so we'll wrap it up 
and we'll carry on, I think, at a later time. I think there's so much to be said. But thank you both so much for your time and your opinions and for being passionate in the space and wanting to bring about the change and being that example. So. You are very welcome. Thank Can you, so you leave us with a basic instinct move? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs>